All right, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. Our in sale and emerge doctor in Toronto. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here, but when you fly Spirit Airlines, it's a pleasure to be anywhere. So I'm glad I made it. Um, I'm going to talk to you about emerge orthopedics. Uh, I, this is North York General Hospital, where I work in Toronto. Toronto is, if it was in the US, it would be the third biggest city in the US, like behind New York and LA. It's a big city. Uh, we work at a very busy community teaching hospital. I work in the emergency department there. And, and working there, you know, we, orthopedics was always an area that I felt comfortable with. So my first 12 years, 15, 20 shifts a month, when you get to fast track, no ambulatory, nobody wants to be the slow doc. So you pick up a chart. If you work in an efficient place, the x-ray is already done. You look at the x-ray. She's injured her wrist, no problem. Go and examine the patient and look for snuffbox tenderness. If the x-ray is normal and they have snuffbox tenderness, it's a clinical scaphoid fracture. If they don't have clinical tender, uh, tenderness of their scaphoid, it's soft tissue injury wrist and you move on. And you get through them pretty quick and that's great. I'll show you four cases. This is a 46-year-old fall on outstretched hand. I don't think there's a diagnostic dilemma as to what's wrong here. Right, we've got his problem. He gets reduced in the emergency department. It's a pretty bad fracture. When he gets to orthopedics, it ends up being surgical. Okay, great. Here's the 37-year-old lady. She injures her wrist, no snuff box tenderness, soft tissue injury the wrist, splint, and away she goes. Makes sense. 39-year-old guy falls off a tree, he's pruning a tree. He hammers his lateral tibial plateau. That is a nasty fracture. It's a big sore swollen knee. You call ortho, they're like, can you please get a CT scan? We get a CT scan. They're like, boy, that's really pushed down. They're gonna operate awesome. The orthopedic stuff, that's obvious. We see that pretty easily. And we let ortho know about it. And this 42-year-old guy, it's a med mal case I was asked to review. His x-rays are normal. So these are normal x-rays. They're just copies of copies is what I've got. But his x-rays were negative. He injured his knee working in the middle of the night. X-ray done, doc worked five in the morning, exhausted. X-ray negative, away you go. So if I had an algorithm, I'm not a fan of algorithms. I don't think we think when we have algorithms so much, but if I had one after 12 years, okay, you do an x-ray. If it's positive, they got a fracture or a dislocation. If it's negative, they got a soft tissue injury, unless they have snuffbox tenderness. And if they have snuffbox tenderness, their diagnosis is now a clinical scaphoid fracture. This might look familiar to you. Then what happened is in 2005, the orthopedic surgeons asked me to work in the fracture clinic. One day a week, look after minor fractures, simple stuff. I'm like, sure, I, I can look after the simple stuff. I like ortho, it's fine. And when I went there, I'll tell you, these 12 orthopedic surgeons taught me tons. I learned more in 12 weeks of running the minor fracture clinic than I did in 12 years of working full-time emergency medicine about eMERGE ortho. And to learn more, for the last seven years, I go to the operating room one day a week to work on their trauma cases, to assist on their trauma cases. I have zero interest in being a surgeon. I have tons of interest in learning from a surgeon. And one of the most important things that I learned on this path is that this algorithm, what's the word, sucks. It's awful. And if you use the same algorithm that I did, I think in five minutes you will learn why you should be stopping. We shouldn't be surprised. So when I'm asking you to sort of rethink your, your, your eMERGE ortho approach, I'm not asking you to do something special for eMERGE patients with orthopedic injuries. I'm asking you to treat them the same way you treat other patients. If somebody came in with chest pain, nobody would think of doing, let's just do an ECG and a troponin. If it's positive, they have an acute coronary syndrome. If it's negative, they have benign chest pain. Of course, that's a terrible algorithm. But when we do that for orthopedics, we are treating the eMERGE patient, ortho patients differently and we need to stop. We need to find the needles in a haystack. Not the rare case you're gonna see once in a career, but the case that's a little more subtle, a little more hidden, you just have to go digging for it. Emerge in orthopedics, it's about 15% of visits. We don't do so well with it because it's over 30% of lawsuits and complaints. And when they look at those lawsuits and complaints, 70% of the time, it's a misdiagnosis. We just didn't make the right diagnosis. It's a difficult job. 20% of the time, it's what we did in the eMERGE department. We didn't manage it properly. 10% of the time, we didn't give proper discharge advice. We didn't get them to the right person at the right time. So if you want to get more bang for the buck with orthopedics, get better diagnostically. This 37-year-old lady looks pretty benign. She had a surgical case. I'll tell you why in a few minutes. This 42-year-old guy, 
These are his x-rays from day one. I don't have x-rays from day 11, but if I did, they'd look like this. He had an amputation through his knee on day 11. And I'll walk you through that case as well. But as an approach, if this is a 54-year-old lady with chest pain, again, another med legal case I was asked to look at, everybody here is like, I know what she's got, why she has chest pain. Right, this is her ECG 18 hours earlier when she had a very classic story, exertional chest pain, shortness of breath, a little diaphoretic, one ECG done, one troponin done and sent home. Diagnosed with reflux. Of course, none of us would do that. We know, we know ECG normal is not a diagnosis. We know to be afraid of that sometimes. What you also have to appreciate is that X-ray normal is not a diagnosis. It's not enough. ECG normal, great. We know what to be scared of. You know, Ruben Strayer told us a whole bunch of great stuff about looking for the aorta, looking at it for PE, all kinds of stuff we know. You can still have an ACS. If you have a normal knee x-ray, that's a good starting point, a normal ankle x-ray, but it's not enough. They're just a test. And the purpose of any test is to affect your pretest probability. So a normal ECG, you know to be scared of. If somebody has a normal knee x-ray, what should you be scared of? S. Septic, this is all in the notes. C, compartment syndrome. A, abuse, we're terrible at picking up abuse. R, E, two letters, two things to think about. It could be referred pain. That patient with a normal knee x-ray, maybe it's coming from their hip or their back, and the only way you know that is by touching their knee and realizing their knee doesn't hurt. And if we don't touch them, we don't find that little clue. The report is false. If you work somewhere where a radiologist may read the films while you're on shift, that's great. If it's normal, we just look, oh, I'm not gonna, well, why should I look at another normal ankle x-ray? If it's abnormal, we go look at the x-ray. But I'll tell you, if there's an abnormality, 20% of the time, radiologists will miss it. The radiology report, if there's an abnormality, they'll miss it 20% of the time. D is a dislocation or a subluxation that may spontaneously reduce. O is an operative soft tissue injury. Don't worry, ACL, MCL versus medial meniscus in the emergency department but do think about quads rupture, patellar tendon rupture. And F is a fracture you just can't see. So for every shoulder injury, wrist injury, ankle injury, whatever it happens to be, just run through this scared of mnemonic and you're less likely to miss the abnormalities. What happened to this lady? When she comes back to clinic to see me, where's her pain? Like again, compared to the opposite side, she's a little bit swollen. This is where her point of maximal tenderness is. I never used to touch this when I just worked full-time emerge my first 12 years in practice. The only thing I touched was snuff box. But there are three spots. On the left is her ulnar styloid, right? The one a little bit higher up is her distal radius, and the one where she's tender there is her scaphalunate space. You need to know surface anatomy, you need to touch, and that's where it's sore. And now you go look at the exact same x-ray you just saw, knowing where she's sore. If you wanna get better at looking at x-rays, get better at examining patients. And when you look at it, that space, boy, it's not obvious, but if you look for it, it's there. Don't worry about measuring it. It should be equal to the other spaces between the carpals, and it's clearly wide. Missed by eMERGE, missed by radiology. It's very subtle. But if you touch these patients before you look at their x-ray, your chance of picking it up is greater. So she comes back to clinic. When we're worried about that, we do an extra view called a clenched fist view, which she gets. Add this to your toolbox once in a while if you're ever worried about this injury, and you can see this opens up. I send her to a surgeon, and it gets operated on. So it's a very subtle finding. That's the needle in the haystack. The link is you have to actually touch them. If you don't touch patients, you're not touching them to cause pain. That's bad. You're touching them to find the cause of their pain. That's why you touch patients. This 42-year-old had an industrial accident. He was at work, fell off of a big sort of a dump truck. He was working in the oil sands of northern Alberta. Sent home, x-ray negative, soft tissue injury. He had a lot of pain. The EMS report had all kinds of red flags. He comes back. He has compartment syndrome. He has an ischemic leg. He loses his leg. And the orthopedic surgeon dictated. The patient says his foot was in his groin with a hyperextension injury. Just take three seconds and process that. And try to put your foot in your groin. Well, don't actually try that, it might be a little hard. right? If the x-ray is negative, he must have dislocated his knee. But if we don't ask, we don't find. And the history is still very important. 
So if it's an obvious diagnosis, the history and the physical and the test tell you it's wrong. But if it's a subtle diagnosis, it's the history or the physical or the test that tells you something's wrong, whether it be chest pain, headache, abdominal pain, or wrist pain. And what, if you just rely on the test, you are diminishing your chances of picking up that needle in a haystack. So your approach, get rid of this. Here's what you should do. The typical fast track path, get rid of this as well. Better track path, fast track path, pick up a chart. Go see the patient. I know you had an x-ray done. If I hear your story and examine you, I can look at your x-ray better. Recognize that the x-ray is done. Then go touch the patient. And if you know where they're sore, when you go look at the x-ray, I promise you, you'll be better. And I promise you, you do this in the next few months, you will pick up needles on a haystack. Thank you very much.